we have to evaluate the integral now in a different way. Exactly. And for that, we could use this identity, which in your book is equation uh, 159. What that does is it removes the gradient from one part on the integral to the other part. It's equation 159 in your book. I'll tell you exactly where it is. Page uh, 54. Okay. You could easily derive that. It's not, it's not hard. You could start by the product rule uh, and then apply the divergence theorem. And then you get that result. Makes sense? So, uh, so yeah, so this is equation 159. If you want, after we do the question, I could show you how to derive that. But it's it's simple. A couple steps, you'll get there. Uh, so in our question, the left-hand side here, right, is is the integral. You agree? Yeah. So what's A in our case? Let's assign what each of these are. What's F first? Whatever is multiplying the, the divergence. So f will just be 1 plus e to the minus r. Right? Yeah. 1 plus e to the minus r. You understand? You just cross match them. And what's a? A would be. Uh, what's. It's like before. It's, r it's like r before. R over r squared. Exactly. r hat over r squared. And now all you have to do is plug them on the right hand side of equation 159. So uh, if we do that, then uh, the question, let's just call this i, so I don't have to keep rewriting it. So i will just equal to, by equation 159, so now I'm going to transform the left-hand side to the right-hand side, so it's going to be minus volume integral of a, r hat over r squared, dot gradient of f, which is uh, 1 plus e to the minus r hmm? d tau so that's the first integral plus now a closed surface integral of f which is 1 plus e to the minus r yeah times a which is r hat over r squared dot da Okay, and then we'll just evaluate the, uh, each one of the integrals there? different it, separately, huh? So there's no divergence theorem in this? Or? No, no. The divergence theorem is how to get to equation 159. I could show you that later if you're interested. Okay. I, now I'm just plugging it straight in. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and we just do it. So, uh, so the divergence theorem comes out of Stokes theorem or, or Green theorem or something, right? Yeah. So let's see in spherical coordinates what the gradient is. This is the gradient in spherical coordinates. There's no theta dependence, there's no phi dependence. So it's just r hat. Hmm? Yeah. So here we have, so I'm gonna start with this first integral here, minus integral v r hat over r squared. Hmm? Dotted with the gradient is there's only the r hat component these two are both zero the theta component and the phi component so this would be r hat dot the derivative of this with respect to r what's the derivative of one zero what's the derivative of e to the minus r minus one times e to the minus r with respect to r right right d tau Notice r hat dot r hat will be one, just like before. So this will be a scalar quantity. So if, if I were to just do this, this is gonna be uh, r hat dot r hat will get you one, minus and minus becomes plus, and you're gonna get e to the minus r over r squared d tau. And let's, we might as well just replace d tau with what it is. That's r squared sine theta 
dr from 0 to capital R right this is a triple integral <clears throat> d theta we're integrating over the surface of a sphere so 0 to pi and d phi is 0 to 2 pi okay we're done with and notice the r squared crosses out the r squared so I'm done with the first integral so now let's go to the second integral here okay so let's partition them so plus uh, uh, what's dA we said that dA is uh, just the normal vector to the area which in the case of a sphere it's in the same direction of r hat so this would be 1 plus e to the minus r r hat over r squared dotted with r hat because dA is in the direction of r hat times dA okay we'll take care of dA in a second dA scalar okay so uh, r hat dot r hat is 1 so we get a uh, closed surface integral 1 plus e to the minus r right and then we have r 1 over r squared and then what's dA this is a double integral hmm? on a sphere what's dA it's r squared right and by the way uh, r is fixed here yeah on the surface so I could replace this r with capital R and this would also be capital R here you agree yeah and uh, r squared and this is going to be r squared and then we have sine theta from 0 to pi and uh, d theta and then d phi from 0 to 2 pi you could just put 4 pi right away if you want like we did before it doesn't matter okay fair enough so uh, let's evaluate this so then I get I equal uh, I have uh, uh, 0 to R e to the minus R dr that's one integral 0 to pi sine theta d theta and then 0 to 2 pi d phi right three integrals and they're simple this is going to get you to pi this is going to get you two that's how you get four pi on the solid angle on theta phi and this is just e to the minus r right let's let's just do it e to the minus r over minus one right the integral of e to the minus r is e to the minus r divided by the chain rule yeah. derivative of minus r is minus one and then we evaluate this from 0 to r and if we do that we get 4 oops we get 4 pi hmm? uh, e to the minus outside e to the minus r minus 1 right because if you replace r with 0 you get 1 e to the 0 is 1 okay times 4 pi we already have it okay we're done with this moving on to the right hand side same thing hmm? we get these r squared cancel out we get 1 plus e to the minus r this can completely come out come out of the integral it's independent of the integral hmm? 0 to pi sine theta d theta 0 to 2 pi d phi and just like before this gets you 2 pi this gets you 2 right that's how you get 4 pi and then you have 1 plus e to the minus there's a plus here by the way don't forget the plus we're adding e to the minus r yeah and there's a plus and now we just add the blue one uh, with the red one hmm so we get minus 4 pi e to the minus r plus 4 pi and here when you multiply you're gonna get plus 4 pi plus 4 pi e to the minus r bingo these two go away and what do we get 8 pi which is exactly what we got when we did it using 
the first way has to be otherwise yeah, something sure. yeah, something, wrong. something would be wrong yeah has to be consistent You understand what happened here? I mean, it's much longer, yeah. but it illustrates the power of vector calculus identities, which we got through the divergence theorem. 